Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and we've got a Suzuki King Quad 500 here on the hoist that's come in for a service and some repair to the front end. It's had a, some collision damage and it's bent the bracket that holds one of the uh, I think it's the front left hand headlight has all been pushed back in so I've got all that to fix as well and of course it needs some new tyres. It's not in the best state possible but hey that's why bikes come into the workshop to get work done don't they unfortunately it's turned up in a terribly muddy state uh, which is pretty common for farm bikes so it's going to need mrs mechanics going to give the, the whole thing a really good wash later on today and then at some point either i think friday uh, sorry saturday or sunday or maybe even on monday we'll have to wait and see it's going to get all the work done tires are already ordered and hopefully they'll rock up tomorrow. We have already got a service kit that's turned up in the post from Kai Tire Motorcycles, uh, obviously in Kai Tire, right at the top of, nor of uh, the North Island here in New Zealand. So let's take a quick look inside the box, see what we've got. We're probably gonna need some more stuff to be fair. Right, here we go. Dum -dum -dum -dum. So release any blood, Andy. Oh. Free packing, I always like free packing. Right, we have a new air filter element and some more bits in here. Look, very, always very well packed in Tai Tai Nuts like this. There we go, and they, this is what they recommended. So we've got this looks like a fuel filter, which is in the tank on the fuel pump, I think. Let's have a little look. Now, the part number for this is 15420 13 G00. Come on, you can do it. I always love new parts. New parts are always a good thing. There we are. Good box, Suzuki. Well done. Yes, little sock filter inside the fuel pump, uh, inside the fuel tank. We've got that. Now, this is a, a twin cylinder engine, so of course we're going to need two spark plugs, which is an LMAR6A-9, so a 0.9 of a mil gap, pre-gapped at the NGK factory. We've got two of those. Uh, oh, here we look. A genuine Suzuki oil filter. Where's the part number for that? Is it on the box? There we are, look. 16510-07J00. Cool. And we've also got, in the bag, couple of new o-rings we've got valve clearances to adjust hmm we've only got two that's surprising being twin cylinder you think there may be four of those don't know <laughs> we'll find out okay so those are the parts we've got to play with at the moment like i could say i think we're probably gonna need a few more parts as well tires should be here hopefully later on tomorrow get those slapped on over the weekend until then let's take a quick look around the bike i haven't take, even taken the wheels off just yet but um, well, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll pull a wheel off and have a look and just check the brake pads because I need to know as soon as possible so I can get those ordered. Right, quick wander around the bike. Here we go. There you go. So it is a Suzuki King Quad four-wheel drive 500 AXI. Pretty resilient bikes, actually, for, for farmers. They cope with quite a bit and cope with not being looked after too well, which is usually what happens um, as you can see, it's pretty muddy under there, so it needs a really good wash before we can even contemplate servicing the bike. We've got bash guards and stuff to take off as well. Need to get rid of those. Um, so yeah, poor old Mrs. Mechanic's gonna have a work cut out giving this one a clean. That's for sure. I have no idea how many k's or hours it's done. We can have a little look on the dash actually and have a look and, and see. Uh, I'm going to give the bike a major service, including valve clearance adjustment. I'm assuming it's just tappets, hopefully. But yeah, look at all the mud build-up. This is the kind of environment that these bikes have to work in day after day, and it's it's very, very hard on them, to be, to be fair. It really is. Right, so let's have a look on that dash and see what the mileage is, or the usage, if we can see that. Let's have a look. Ah, it's quite a new one, look. It's only doing 1,811 kilometers. So it'll have had its first service, it'll be its second service. Ah, not too bad. 
Right, so one more thing to do before it goes outside and gets a really, really good wash. Let's pull off a front wheel, pull off a rear wheel, and we'll just check those brake pads, see if we need to get those ordered. Here we go. Holy moly, look at all the mud. Right, it's my special mud removing tool. Let's just have a little dig down and see how much material is left on those pads. Okay. So this is the brake backing plate for the pad. That's that steel piece there. And then what we're looking at is the gap, I'll say that the amount of material between the face here and the disc itself. And there's probably about, I would say about three millimeters, which isn't too bad, but let's check the underside as well. Not as easy to see under here, because sometimes these pads can wear on a taper. So, well, it's not too bad actually. I think we'll get away with leaving those in for this service. We'll just give a bit of a clean up. So front brake pads, not too bad. I mean, bearing in mind, it's only coming for its second service. It's 18, 1,800 kilometers. It's probably going to do another 1,500 kilometers before its next service. I need to make the decision, will those pads last until its next service? I think it's borderline. We'll find out when I have a closer look with you later in the video. Okay, let's pull the rear wheel off and, uh, and check those. Here we go. tight jeez who took those up something's missing so clearly this particular model of Suzuki doesn't have rear brakes on each of the rear hubs the rear brake system is inboard and looks like it's integral to the final drive unit which means it's probably a wet brake which also means it probably doesn't need any work other than some adjustments because wet brakes are brilliant for off-road ATVs and ROVs. Well, that'll save me a job. So there we go, a very quick look around. I've not checked ball joints or wheel bearings, anything like that. The bike is almost new. It's done 1800 kilometers in its entire life. So I'm not expecting to come across any wear items like that whatsoever. Okay, well, I need to crack over some other jobs now. Mrs. Mechanic's got this bike to wash. I'll see you in a couple of days, or seconds, hang in there. and the Suzuki 500 AXI has now been washed. So I've decided over the last couple of days to break these videos up, break the service up into separate videos. Uh, and the first one, this one, is going to cover replacing the engine oil. Right, so let's take a quick look in the Suzuki service manual and see what it says about this particular task. Here we go. Right, in section OB-9, Maintenance and lubrication, it tells us all about the engine oil replacement. So, first step is replace the vehicle on a level ground and set the park lock. Well, it's on a bike hoist, so that's all good. Remove the engine side cover. 
refer to front, side, exterior parts removal and installation in section 9D-6. As if by magic, here is the page. Uh, rear, right, engine side cover removal. Remove the engine side cover one. Right, so it's that one there. Look, looks like it's on the left hand side. And that's it. We've got three little screws, things to remove. One. Okay, let's go and do that. Okay, okay. Well, this is the side cover, and we've got three sort of fast plastic push pins to remove. So, hopefully, that won't be too hard to get out. Let's give it a go. Especially on camera. Camera's always bad, isn't it? I'm trying to work around the camera as well. So that's one. We'll take him out completely. I think you get the idea, don't you? You've got to pull the middle bit out and that then releases it. Yeah, that's two. We're two thirds of the way there. At last. Right. Oh my word. One side cover removed. What's next? Okay, next step. It says put an oil pan under the engine and drain the engine oil by removing the oil drain plug one. That's underneath the engine. And the oil filler cap two. There's no mention of warming the engine up. We should do that first. And then we'll crack on with those. Right, engine's been idling now for three or four minutes. The engine's not at full operating temperature. We don't want that, because then the oil's gonna be too hot to work with. But it's nice and warm. That's all we need, so we'll turn it off and we'll go and find that drain bung. Right, just for identification purposes, this is the drain bung that we need to undo. So we'll get that cracked off now. Right, we need a drain pan. Okay, we're ready to drain the engine oil out. Before we do that, don't forget to wear some gloves. It's important you don't get the engine oil or any kind of lubricants really on your bare skin. Jeez, these are always fun to put on, aren't they? Now, don't forget to remove the, uh, the filler bung, the cap, because that's gonna help the oil to drain out a bit quicker. Stop any kind of vacuuming, potential vacuuming anyway, in the crankcase. Super job. Okay, rag is to hand because we're going to get some on the glove, it's inevitable. Here we go. Three, two, <laughs> one. There we go. Magic. Not too hot. That's good. Right, so let's leave that to drain and we'll go and read the next step. Right, while the oil's draining out, let's have a quick read through and see what's next. Step four, tighten the oil drain bung one to the specified torque. Caution, replace the gasket washer with a new one. That's very important, otherwise you might get a bit of an oil leak. Uh, techs sometimes, when they don't replace the, uh, the washer, the sealing washer, they tend to over tighten the sump plug to try and compensate. That's a bad thing because it can cause the threads in the crankcase to strip and that's a really bad problem. So I'll go and find a, a, a new sump plug washer for it and the tightening torque is 21 newton meters. Cool, let's go and do that. Super job. Right, bung back on with a nice new washer. The 
give it a final clean shortly. And what did we say? 21 newton meters. Let's go and get a torque wrench. That was right. Memory hasn't failed me yet. 21 newton meters. Jeez, that's not very tight. You can see why people over tighten sometimes. Now, as part of the cleaning process, we've already removed the underbody protection on this quad bike uh, because it was so full of mud that we had to take it all off to do the wash. So I'll be putting all that back on later on. And it's a lot easier to remove it. It's only a few bolts. And then you can really get in and see what you're doing. Okay, done that bit. Going back up. Uh, five, pour new oil through the oil filler when performing an oil change without oil filter replacements. Well, we're going to change the oil filter as well. So we need to do that, don't we? Does it tell us how to change the oil filter? Yes, let's do that next. So, oil filter replacement, done that. Done that. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, remove the oil filter one using special tool 09915-40620 oil filter wrench. I might have one of those, we'll have a hunt round. And it says to apply engine oil lightly to the o-ring of the new oil filter. That's pretty standard for oil filters. Before installation. Caution. Use only a genuine Suzuki motorcycle oil filter. Other manufacturers' oil filters may differ in thread specifications, thread diameter and pitch, filtering performance and durability, which may lead to engine damage or oil leaks. Also, do not use a genuine Suzuki automobile oil filter on this vehicle. No, it has to be one for an ATV. That's right. Okay, let's go find the oil filter and get it pulled off. Ah, there it is, right down at the front of the engine. So access via the front left hand wheel. So we'll take the wheel off and then we can get in there. Now, I do have a, uh, a special tool which clips onto the top of the filter and keys into all these little flats. Unfortunately, much to my surprise, it's not in the drawer where it lives. I'm a bit concerned where it might have got to. I might have to order another one. So, getting this out won't be as easy, but I do have some really cool... Uh, what are these? These are blue point pliers, especially for oil filters. So we'll give these a go, if I can get in. And hopefully, well, maybe maybe it might be loose enough. Hang on, let's give it a go. Oh, it's nice and tight. Okay. Jeez, this is this will prove the camera work, won't it? Holy moly! I think I'll take this in the guard off. Give me some more room. Hockley dockley, that's a lot better with that inner guard out of the way, and it only took about three pins to get it off, so good idea. Okay, we're going in underneath the coolant pipe, around the camera, single handedly. Give it a crush, make sure we're not against the frame. <laughs> it's so much easier than the right tool, I tell you. We're moving. That's pretty tight. To be fair, very easy to get to. And with the right tool, even easier. Out comes the oil. Fortunately, onto the rag. Good job, rag.
Right, extract that. And now we need to clean up that surface where the O-ring seal seals against. Again, so much easier than some cars to get to. Pretty well thought out, well done Suzuki. And obviously when you're doing this, be careful you don't drag dirt off the outside of the engine. This bike has been washed, but as you can see, there's still plenty of dirt around and we spent a long time washing it. ETVs are not the easiest things to clean, to be fair. There, look, a bit of dirt's just dropped down. Get that wiped away. looking pretty good it's well worth spending the time doing this making sure you're doing a good job right that's ready for the new filter geez I'm really annoyed that I can't find my special tool that clips onto the end of the oil filters it would have made that job so much easier it's got to be around here somewhere hopefully I've not left it on the last ROV that I serviced I'll have to check. Right, so the genuine Suzuki oil filter is here. I only use genuine parts wherever I possibly can. And the part number for this is, there you go, look, 16504, uh, sorry, sorry, I'll start again, 16510-07J00. If you need one, that's the part number. And I would recommend using genuine Suzuki parts better quality yes they cost a bit more money but hey the quad bike cost a heap of money so the extra little bit for a decent oil filter from suzuki it's nothing is it really in the big picture plus you know service history good service history increases the value the residual value of the bike people look at that kind of stuff these days okay let's get pulled out of the packets and get it slapped on here we go now how the hell do we get into this thing there we go is that going to work? Oh, take a camera, Mr. Young. Camera. There we go. Right. Super job. Now, protective, a protective film on there, obviously. And we'll just remove that. And Suzuki is correct. The O-ring is not uh, pre-greased or pre-oiled. We need to do that. Very important. Otherwise, when you wind that on with that seal being dry and of course the mating surface now being bone dry, we've cleaned it, that seal can pick up and it can cause damage to the o-ring and that can cause leaks. Not good at all. Okay, right, we need some engine oil. Just happen to have just enough on the end of my finger. Look at that. That's all it needs and that's now going to lubricate that seal as we tighten it up. Easy job. Right, so reinstalling the new oil filter, turn it by hand until you feel the, uh, that the oil filter o-ring contacts the oil filter mounting surface and then tighten the oil filter by two full turns or to specify torque using the special tool. Can't find it. Can't, really upset that I can't find it. If you've got one of those tools that fits on the end of the uh, oil filter, then the tightening torque is 20 newton meters just for reference. Right, back to the bike. We're going in. There we go, we're on the threads. Right, it's now contacted on the seal. I'm gonna mark the filter, then I've got to do two full turns. Okay, mark on the filter mark on the housing probably a little bit excessive but at least we know then we we're exactly on two full turns it's quite a fine thread on this filter as well right so we're going round coming up to one full turn now which is there look and we're going to go around again holy moly this is going to be fun <laughs> it'll test my wrist strength won't it Oh, 
so on camera. Jeez, I need a rag. This might involve some swearing. Oh, that's even worse. I can't even see the mark yet. Two turns is a lot, Zuki. Leave it with me, back in a second. Right, I have this. This might do the trick. Let's give it a go. Can't use the clampy ones because they'll damage the filter, but this doesn't damage the filter, fortunately. Jeez. Okay, it's coming around now. Wow, that was quite tight for a filter. Oh, we're not far off, look. Just there. <laughs> we need to be there. God damn. Okay, I have a plan. Oh, right, bit of sandpaper. <laughs> Never had to do this before. Round the filter. Then the filter tool. Over that. Which is easier said than done. There we go. That should allow it to grip the filter now. And coming round. Oh, perfect. Oh. That was a task, Suzuki. Right, let's give that filter a bit of a clean. Two full turns, eh? That was a lot more than 20 newton meters. Sorry. There we go. That'll work. Good stuff. Right, oil filter is fitted. What a saga. At least they tell you how many turns though without a torque wrench, that's pretty good. Because not everybody's got a torque wrench and not everybody's got one of those little caps that fits on the end of the filter either. I haven't got one today. I had one yesterday, haven't got one today. Don't know where it is, it's disappeared. Anyway, uh, add new engine oil and check the oil level as described in the engine oil uh, replacement procedure on the previous page. The oil and filter change, we're just done, and we need 2.7 litres, approximately, of engine oil. Right, let's have a quick look in the manual and see what Suzuki tells us about the specification of the engine oil that we need to use for the 500 King Quad. Right, fuel and oil recommendation. So, engine oil. Uh, it says here, oil quality is a major contributor to your engine's performance and life. It sure is. Always select a good quality engine oil. Suzuki recommends the use of Suzuki Performance for motor oil or equivalent engine oil. Use of SF stroke SG or SH stroke SJ in API with MA in JASO. All of that information is on the cans of oil. Uh, Suzuki go on to say that it recommends the use of SAE 10W40 engine oil. Uh, if 10W40 engine oil is not available, uh, select an alternative according to the chart. Oh, there's a chart. Hang on then. There we go. So can we zoom in on that? We can. Right. So multi-grade. And you've got your temperature range, operating temperature range down here. Uh, we're going to go for 10W40, which is between minus 10 degrees C or... 14 degrees Fahrenheit, if you work on that scale, uh, up to um, 40 degrees centigrade. This is ambient temperature, by the way, uh, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So 10W40 is perfect for this bike. Right, so we need 2.7 litres. Right, Suzuki mentioned that a JASO, which is Japanese Automotive Standards Organization specification, that's their how they measure their grades of oil. Uh, MA, well I've chosen the MA2, which is an even higher rating, uh, which is a 10W40. So we've got our first litre in the jug, a nice clean jug by the way. We'll get it popped in the bike and then we'll do another litre and then we'll do some more. Here we go. 
just in case we get any spill, we'll just tuck that down there, look. Right, it's one funnel, my favourite funnel, this one. Nice and clean, there we go, and first litre of oil going in. Now we don't want to overfill the funnel. So I'll crack on with this. I'll put, let's say 2.6 litres in, I think. And then we'll run it up. In fact, we'll see what the manual says. Uh, and then we'll check the oil level and do a quick top up if it's needed. Right, the last 600 millilitres, 0.6 of a litre. Fantastic. Oh, people keep turning up. It's no good. Right. Okay. So the next job we can run the engine up and then allow the oil to settle to take a good reading. So we'll need to put the bung back in for now. The dipstick. There we go. Okay. Let's go see what the manual has to say. Right. Here we go. Uh, start up the engine and allow it to run for several minutes at idle speed after tightening the oil filler cap. Just done that. Turn off the engine and wait about three minutes and then check the oil level on the dipstick. So don't do it straight away. That's important, otherwise it might end up being overfilled. The oil level should be between the low level line A and the full level line B on the diagram here. If the oil level is lower than the low level A, add oil to the full level line B. We can do that. Easy. Now, one thing it hasn't said in the manual is to check for any oil leaks. So, whilst the engine's warming up, let's have a little wander around the bike, bit of freestyle camera action, and we'll check the oil filter for any leaks. We'll check the, uh, the drain bung for any leaks. We're approaching the three minute mark. We can turn the engine off and then we've got to wait another three minutes for the oil to drain down out of all the oil passages and to fill up uh, and you know, congregate in the engine crankcase. And then we can take an oil level check and we're going to get a decent result. If you do it too early, the level will be too low. It won't truly reflect the amount of oil in the engine. And then of course you'll top it up and then you'll end up with too much oil in the engine, which is a bad thing. You might get oil, for example, into the air filter if that's the case. It's never a good idea, is it? Okay, right, we can turn the engine off now. Right, said Fred, that's our three minutes are up. Let's get the old dipstick taken out. Give it a bit of a clean. There we go, beautiful. Right, now, check the oil level. You don't screw these in, you just pop it on top like that, take it back out and have a look. And we are about three to four millimeters from the top hatching. So you see that, right? Honestly, focus, damn you, there we are. <laughs> right, yeah, three to four mil from the top hatching. So it does need a little bit more oil putting in always better to put a little bit too less in to what the manual says when to start off with because if you put if you end up with too much in there it's a lot more of a hassle trying to get it out right let's try that now we don't need to restart the engine we can just allow that just to drain down into some for say 30 seconds or so and then we can check the oil level again in the meantime i'll give the uh, the old dipstick another wipe down there we go. Right, Mr. Oil Funnel, let's get you out of the way. Okay, 
where are we at today? We are about two millimeters from the top, a little bit more. Let's put in what we've got and see where we end up. Remember the manuals had 2.7 litres, we only put 2.6 in previously. So I knew it would be down a little bit. Okay. Right, hatchings again, where are we at? We are absolutely bang on, perfect. So we'll stick that back in there and we can tighten it up now for the last time. That'll do great. Excellent job. Well, there you go, crew. That's how to do an oil and filter change on, I would say it's about a 2020, given the fact it's done hardly any cares. Suzuki uh, King Quad 500, what is it? AXI. It's got power steering as well. It's not a bad bike, actually. Um, I've covered all the torque settings, quantities, everything you need to know to do the job yourself at home to a high standard. So, if you, if you found this video helpful, why not click on the subscribe button? There's going to be lots more videos covering work on this particular bike to hit the channel in the next few weeks. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. My email address is down the bottom in the description. And if you want to support the channel, and a few do, you can do that through Patreon or through PayPal. The email address for the PayPal payment is again andymechanic at live.co.uk. Okay, crew, well, I've got a heap of work still to do on this bike, so I'll catch you later. Cheers, over and out. Get the fuck up again. Oh,